Now one time for Gregory Plummer. Tote that rock, young men don't fumble. Deal part tiger coming out that jungle. They say you the savage, go give him that rumble. I heard you've been taking it to the house. And you about to be nine in a little while. Keep doing your thing. Hi, I'm Katya. I'm from Peru. And you are watching this one rock on YouTube. In this video, I speak to the owner of a website dedicated to Medellin, Colombia, living in Medellin, Colombia, moving and visiting Medellin, Colombia. It's called methodmedellin.com. Check this out. Follow along. Hey, you watching them on right now? You're watching DC Born Rob on YouTube. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. My name is Rob Christian, also known as DC Born Rob, DC Rob, Rob. I answer to them all. Thank you guys for watching. Again, in this video, I am going to speak with the owner of a resource, a website, all on Medellin, Colombia. It's called Method Medellin. His name is Cav. I'm going to jump into it in a second. Hopefully, you like the beginning. That's my little boy playing football for the first time. The first time I did that video for his birthday. If you want to see the rest of his year, and they won the Super Bowl, by the way, undefeated. I'll put it at the end of this video. But again, if you're getting any benefit out of my videos, do me a favor. Go down and hit the subscribe button. Click the bell to be alerted of any new videos. And like. Like helps the YouTube algorithm. The more you take a second and go down and hit like, the more people get to watch this video. For everybody who takes a second and go down and hit like, this is for you. Thanks for hitting like. You did the right thing by hitting like. Thanks for hitting like. Thanks for hitting like. This is Born Rob. That's right. Thank you guys so much. Let's jump into this interview with Cab, the owner of MethodMedagene.com. Okay, guys. Again, I told you I had another special guest today, another interview. He's going to be off camera for now. Um, but this is a gentleman who actually has a website devoted to travel and living and visiting Colombia. He doesn't currently live in Colombia. Uh, I believe he's in Europe, and he's going to tell you all his details in a second. Uh, but I have Cav on the show today. Welcome to the show, Cav. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so so of some of your articles, I think there's a lot of good information in here, too. I heard your name the other day uh, being discussed by uh, a buddy, a blogger uh, of mine, Razor Rays. I, I listened to his conversations. Yes. Okay. I was out walking and I listened to his stuff while I'm out walking sometimes. I said some good information. And they said, yeah, Absolutely. they were quoting some things that you had said. I had never seen the website. Um, but one of the things they commented on says, I don't know. Why don't you let's call him and bring him on? And I, they, some, well, I think he said, somebody called him. So I said, let me reach out and see if you'll come on. And <laughs> here you are. Yeah. Two days later. So so we can we can run through a few questions right now. But uh, but again, you have a focus on safety as I have a focus on safety to Medellin. So let's just jump straight mm -hmm. in. Your, sure. um, your name is Cab. How old are you, Cab? I'm 27 now. OK. And you you've been coming to Medellin, Colombia for a few years now, right? Since first time was February 2016. OK. So, well, you've seen it. Not 20 years ago when it was terrible, but six years ago when, you know, I saw it first five years ago, five, six years ago, and I fell in love with the place. So Absolutely. I, I understand your thought process here and why you visit. So you go down yearly or do you stay yes, yearly? Yes, year? yearly. Mm -hmm. And um, only, for, I mean, the first year in 2016, I was there for six months. Um, like many others, I ended up staying a lot longer than uh, I had anticipated, such as the charm of the city, I guess. Um, and then since then, I would come uh, for a month at a time or, uh, yeah, I think in 20, the 2019, I was only there for three weeks. But um, I certainly see the changes in that time uh, because I have sort of the, the my perception of the city. And then I sit on that for a year, come back and I can see how my expectations are defied, how, how quickly uh, the city has uh, developed, essentially. <laughs> especially in, in terms of tourism. So since you're coming every year, so let's say you mm -hmm. were here prior to the pandemic and here yes. now, what do you think the differences are crime-wise between two years ago and now? Well, um, well, I, I can say definitely that in 2016 was the second lowest year, according to figures from uh, Alcaldia de Medellin, which is the, the mayor, uh, there were 544 homicides in 2016 which was the second lowest, second best year in that sense. Um, and 
it kind of stayed that way according to the data according to the data um in 2019 um yeah but i think in recent years as tourism has grown and as uh, obviously the city has contended with the residual effects of restrictions which were very uh, draconian very dramatic yeah uh, crime has increased and i think when you talk to a lot of people when you ask a lot of people about this topic it's based on sentiments and what they feel and the vibe of the city but so if you ask me in that sense i would say yeah the, the city does feel like it has gotten you know a little bit more um the word i would say is yeah unsafe mm -hmm. yeah uh, I, I, after the pandemic i was there before until now and it's 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 a different vibe for me anyway walking around with the cameras a no-go now of course yeah, I exactly. could do it two and a half years ago i absolutely would not do it now but you wrote an article entitled, uh, one of your articles, you have numerous articles. By the way, his website is methodmedigine.com, methodmedigine.com. I'll have something scrolled across the bottom, plus I'll leave a link in the uh, description of the video uh, also. If you're going to Medigine, I, from what I've seen, I haven't read it all. I've scanned through as, uh, as much as I could. Good information from what I can tell. Okay, Thank so you. by all means, check this website out, methodmedigine.com. <laughs> Com. especially since I'm just learning about it. I thought I thought I knew a lot more. But um, anyway, so in that article, you you discussed, uh, you know, certain types of videos. You know, there's all different types of content creators. I'm one. Um, and I just moved there, fell in love with the company and started recording. I, I don't mm -hmm. walk around the streets. I have my thoughts on it. I have my personal thoughts on those types of, of videos where they just walk around and show the prostitutes and the working girls mm -hmm. and Yes, You know, just walking around the street and I'll look at the video and it goes 40,000 hits. And I'll look at the thing that must have been years ago. No, that was two days ago. And, and you know, yeah. I've been struggling to put the valuable information out there to keep people safe and to encourage people to travel. It gets a little unnerving sometimes, but all I think all YouTube, all content creators serve a purpose. If somebody's watching it, I mean, they didn't benefit out of it. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Not my cup of tea. Um, but you know, I, I look at all different types. I choose, that's how I vote. I never thumbs down anybody. I, I vote by choosing who I want to see. So like I said, raise a raise. I like watching his, you know, Absolutely. checking a pet, ace live. Those are the one Carlton. I watch those guys. So life with David, was it life with David? I believe he makes videos on YouTube. I really like him. Yeah, uh, life of David, a, I think too. Yeah. His, yeah his he's good really, too. Really his cool, are good. Yeah. yeah. He's knowledgeable of the area too, and I like that. He's actually from Houston too, from what I yeah, he is. Yeah, he's saying. a Texan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so, regarding those videos, though, um, what's your thoughts on those videos? Let's, let's because I don't have the story to read. What are your well, thoughts on those type of videos? It affects the question, doesn't it? You think because you see how many views these videos garner. They they get some of them have millions of views, and uh, it begs the question: Is is this just accommodating for a demand that was already there? Or is it stimulating further demand for sexual tourism in the city? Because, I mean, as a content creator myself, uh, I do my keyword research and I see what are people searching on Google or on YouTube to about Median. And unfortunately, one of those things is, you know, the key words that come up are prostitution, you know, women, um, where to find women, where to find ladies. So there is a demand for that. Um, but my only concern is that this could, again, like I said, stimulate further demand and attract a certain strand of tourism. And if there's one thing I can tell you pretty confidently, and I'm sure you'll agree about criminal, criminal minds in, in Medellin, is that they're quick to adapt. And in the last three years where tourism has really grown exponentially, we've seen new, uh, we've seen new criminal business models, which are basically centered around capitalizing on these tourists. I'll give you an example. And I actually wrote about this in Laureles. In less than 24 hours, two separate punters or two separate um, men that were foreigners looking for women on Tinder had been robbed at the hotel. And unfortunately of those two separate events, one individual lost his life. Um, but like I said, the common thread between these Two incidences, two incidents was that Tinder was used. Oh. So as we can see, and criminal, uh, the police in their uh, post, uh, their initial uh, 
public announcement said that, yeah, we can tell you that both of these individuals were organizing an online meetup. So yeah, it, it, a lot of people come in here looking for women are unsuspecting and don't realize actually that they could get themselves in trouble. Um, of course, there's the threat of scopamine as well, which is growing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that's, that's what I would say. Well, thought process, what, what do you think of, of prostitution in, in Colombia uh, specifically? Oh, well, I would say it's always been there. It's long been there before any Western Westerner arrived in the city. That's that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. However, and, and in terms of, you know, the morality of it and so forth, uh, you know, I think that if it's regulated and if it's, um, yeah, if it's a regulated industry and the women have certain protections uh, in their favor, you know, who am I to say what you can and can't do? I understand that Colombia is a, a Medellin has a developing economy and many of these women, I, I don't want to say they have no other option, but they, they feel compelled to, to, to go down that route. Um, I don't have anything personal against, uh, against prostitution or if you want to go and see a woman, I think that in many ways it, it has its advantages and its disadvantages. Right. And I th yeah, that's what I would say about, say about exactly. that. Exactly. I think the same way. You're gonna you're paying for it one way or another. I mean, it, exactly. It, you are paying for it. One way it's, a, it's a business transaction. Exactly. It's legal. You know, per they, I've had people that will comment. You know, some negative things, and my my comment sometimes is I have to think first before I comment because sometimes I react. And oh, you know, too. if you really want to do something, don't stop my don't try to stop my videos. You need to you know vote in your own it's, country. Precisely. You know. So that that's the law there, and and it's legal. So you know if if that's how you choose to interact and do business, again, my whole thing is safety. I could kill it either way. I don't care. It's their, it's their choices on both sides. It's an agreement where exactly. I come in and have a serious opinion is that when you start drugging uh, the men, then I have a problem with that. Okay, oh, of course, so, yeah, it's terrifying. With that said, um, what do you think about the latest rash of scopolamine druggings and robbings? Well, um, I think that they're unsettling and anybody that's spent some time in the city will eventually cross paths with someone that has their own story, whether it's a friend of a friend or it's, you know, it's the threat. You're never far from it. And I think that we're reminded of that. Having said that, it's weird when, when, you, when you enter the city, isn't it? Because it seems to be, it's like such a contrast to what you're told and the stigma not the stigma, but the preconceived ideas of how the city is going to be. You get to Medellin and you're so relaxed and the vibe is so inviting that men do let their guard down. And unfortunately, yeah, like there are people that capitalize on that. And scopolamine has, has the potential for really long lasting effects. It can rob you of your, your memory, your, your physical health. Yeah, it's, it's really shocking. And unfortunately, like I say, there are business models, actual like business models, but illegitimate, dedicated to the exploitation of tourists. And so we are seeing more people fall victim. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty alarming, but I think that in the same, same token, it's quite easy to avoid getting yourself into trouble. And that's why that's why watching your videos or just being informed prior before arriving is really important because it is avoidable. Well, you have a good section on your website. I'm going to read. You have the, the red dots. I have them up on my uh, other screen so I can uh, step through some of your tips because I ah, think yes. they're all. Um, but when, when it comes to someone um, that does go down and gets drug, whose fault is it? Do you think it's the guy's fault? For going down and participating or do you think it's the actual criminal's fault oh, that's funny isn't it because in colombia there is as we all know by now the expression the expression not no dar papaya, dar papaya which yeah. essentially is just blaming the victims right and i think that we're noticing that this definition of giving papaya seems to grow the definition or what is encompassed within that giving papaya it grows every day i don't know if you agree with that but it seems that, you know, I've read online, people have been 
victim blame simply because they were walking past six o'clock in the afternoon, which I think is absolutely crazy. I would say that if you're going to Medellin to answer your question, obviously it's, it's the criminal's fault. No one deserves to be um, drugged, uh, regardless of what they're doing. If they're not, as long as they're not causing harm to anyone else, if they're seeing women um, or seeing prostitutes, they certainly shouldn't be drugged for it and have their life changed you know, for the worse as a result. Having said that, I do think that there are men that are behaving recklessly or foolishly even. And I think, like I say, I think it's very avoidable. And there are many cases where people get drugged and they could have easily avoided the situation with some, um, with some more common sense, right? I'm not gonna say it's, I'm not gonna victim blame entirely, but um, I think the truth lies in between with regards to whose fault, whose fault it is. Okay, so, uh, well, back to the, the recording, I'm, I'm thinking of other, all the other YouTubers who are out there and what motivated me to start blogging. Um, and, and I used to watch two and a half years ago when I lived there, I used Ace. to, well, before I moved there, I used to watch uh, Ace Live from yes. his first day at the airport. I watched him. Uh, I watched Carlton. I knew Carlton was a good guy, good guy yes, before I yes. there, And that's my buddy now too. Um, Carlton's Travel Adventures. Um, um, I guess later along, I saw Check and Effect, um, but there was also another guy that was in, that would go around from Cali, ex-military guy that would go around just and talk and meet in the, meet, meeting women and so on and just explaining the area. So now that's how I, I, I said, you know what, if I ever go, I'm going to do it. And I started doing it that day from the plane. But again, now you have people who want to go to Colombia for that express purpose of recording videos because they see what the clicks are. They see what the, yeah. mm -hmm. I've since demonetized my channel anyway. I don't know if you know, but I, I don't even make money off of it because I'm tired of people saying I'm making money and I just did my taxes. Let me tell you something. I ain't making no money on it. I spent more than I, than I make on wow. this. So anybody who watches this video needs to know I don't do this for the money. Okay. So uh, whoever comments that needs to cut that out. But Regarding the ones who are out there re recording, the, the new guys who go down with, th with that thought in mind, walking around with a camera. First of all, you're a mark if you're walking around with a camera. They're, somebody's yeah. always watching. But what are your thoughts on that as being uh, sexual exploitation of the women by walking around with a camera? What's your thoughts on that? I think that it's, um, it's harmful. It's harmful, harmful as well to, to all parties involved, including uh fellow tourists because you're attracting a certain strand of tourism which is more vulnerable because the let's say the prevalence of fe uh, crime occurring against sexual tourists in my opinion and there is some data to suggest to agree with this it is more dangerous you are a higher risk so if that's something that you're comfortable doing then then go for it but it's something that you should weigh up morally uh, and with regards to the woman, yeah, this is this this is exploitation. I'll give you another example of a change that has happened as a result of of these kinds of videos. The landscape in Jeras. I know right now it's under construction, but from 2016 to 2019 and and beyond, there's a, they've always been street workers. Always, they've had their stretch at, usually at the top of the park, but it just spiraled out of control. And what ended up happening is you had this area which was once reserved for the upper, the upper crust of society. All the fanciest of paises would flock to Parque Geras. And now you don't see any of them because they don't want to be, they don't want to be misidentified as, as prostitutes. And so this is an example where we as, as content creators have changed the terrain. And I don't think that's in, in a positive way. I think it's had an adverse effect on the landscape. Um, so yeah, I think that just be careful if you love the city, uh, if you like what it's provided for you, Medellin has done a lot for me personally, treat it with respect, treat the people with respect. Um, yeah, I know that the video has garnered lots of views and I know that, I don't know if you can even, I, I don't know, I don't know how, what the monetization strategies are because I think YouTube is quite tight on sexualized content. I don't know the ins and outs, maybe you can explain more, but yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly a moral question that you have to weigh up. I don't know if the money's there, then that seems to be enough to compel people. But those are just my opinions.
Yeah, I don't think. Can you make any... a lot of money? Can can yeah? I thought too much. Uh, whoever's getting forty thousand hits on a video they just walked around and did two days ago is making some money. They Oof. can do this for a living. For wow. a living. Wow. I just I could not. That's just not me. Um, I don't I don't fault anybody for doing it. The opportunity's there. Somebody's taking the opportunity. Um, you're providing real risk. value. You're providing real value. You're actually um, you're informing because you're informing the tourists that come here with about the safety and you're telling people that they can have a good time but you're telling them how they can do so without running into trouble and that's genuine value right more so than uh, any value these sexualized videos could possibly bring well in my well, opinion. i'm gonna think that <laughs> no I'm gonna that's just silly into it, so i'm gonna think that you're gonna think that anybody else who takes the time to edit is gonna think that because editing is it's no joke. Um, it's no joke. It, what you see on camera is nothing uh, compared to what has to be done to get what you what you see on camera, you know, online. But you know, one thing that you said a, a second ago about the cameras uh, made me think of the, the of those who walk around taking videos of girl and the the girls and the girls who are hiding their faces. Are they possibly hiding their faces because they're not prostitutes and they don't want to be on your walkthrough video? Well, this is one of the many possibilities, you know, and it's just something that's completely disregarded when you go out there and record them. There's no consideration. But I can tell you this. Uh, the ones that are sexual workers do not like to be recorded because many of them do. You know, that's their livelihood, but it's not something they're necessarily proud of. Um, and they have their reasons for not wanting to be recorded. And I know I'm sure there are quite a few of them. If they see you with your camera, they're going to confront you. Um, and that's that alone is something you don't want. But if they start call, making phone calls and telling their jefes, look, I'm being hassled here. People are recording me. Can you see how it has the potential to get ugly, especially if more people are doing this? People cotton on to what's going on around them very quickly in the city. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is it worth the risk? I think it's a growing danger. It's, I mean, they're coming up with better cameras. It looks like they're just hitting mm -hmm. a, little bit, a little better. But I'll tell you this. Uh, I used to, when I lived there, I used to go to Dance Free, like on the other, uh, Calle de Sur, on, you okay. know, the, another block over. Yes. And I would walk over to the park and I would sit on that corner. It says now the or something like that, the red sign. It was called something else before the pandemic. And I would sit there and have my double vodka, my double absolute and eat my popcorn. And I would just sit there and literally I'm eating popcorn and watching the view. And, I'm, and I don't care who tells me this. I'm not making this up. I did not know they were prostitutes. I just thought they were good looking girls. This is like the most popular area in town. I was taken over by Colombians when I first went down for business. Mm -hmm. My associates who are now friends took me around and it was like, it was amazing. Uh, and to yeah. this day, I still don't know an area that's like that. And I've been around the world. But this is the only place I know that has blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks of just high-end restaurants and bars and, and and beautiful women walking around. I did not know until, you know, a little bit longer, it was brought to my attention by my girlfriend at the time that guys go down there for this. I, honestly, I lived it. I did not know that before I moved there. I did not know that. You, you commented, or did I read one of your stories that said something about, you know, I'd love to go to Medellin, but you know, what do people want to think about me if I go to Medellin? Mm -hmm. In other words, yes. you're you have a stigma on you if you go to Medellin because of that. It's now they think you're involved or you you are part partaking because yeah. you go to Medellin. Yeah, um, that's the thing. And it is stigmatized. And I can give you an example of what happens in my own case. Like my closest friends from London, uh, I have a feeling sometimes I have to, remind them that I'm not actually infatuated with Median because of because of the women uh, for other reasons of course Median has some absolutely stunning women and for me actually I don't know of a, of a place in this world where there are just generally so many good looking people um, I think a lot of people say that as well but certainly like there is for me and the way I've seen it the way I've seen people respond to me being so obsessed with the city they think that I'm going because of the women, which is annoying. There's so much more on, you know, on offer. Um, and it's it a shame annoying. as well. It's a shame it because, yeah, the city's worked very shame. hard to sort of shake off, to shake off this lingering reputation that it's had. And only now is it kind of shaking off 
the shackles of its past. But it seems to be that is happening in vain because it's just exchanging one stigma for another. Um, yeah, it's a shame. Well, you're you're rare in that you're young, and that's not where you're going. Most of the people who go down not for that are older cats like myself who want to go down, <laughs> who want to retire, who just want to chill out, get away from the states, mellow out. People are friendly there if you get the time to know them. Stay away from Yara, stay away from Satenta, and just enjoy the city and do some tours and, and enjoy the culture. There's so much to do. But before, I know you were, were short on time too, but I had one last question before I read your bullet points. And, and that was, um, because I saw something in one of your articles about the robbers, what happened to the robbers. And so my question for you is, what do you think happens to the robbers when they're caught? How seriously is this treated? Uh, this is the problem. I, Median, in my opinion, has some of the most, you know, uh, competent police. It has the most competent police institution in, in the country, arguably, I think others will dispute that. Um, and in terms of capturing police, whilst many, too many robbers uh, never even see what see the handcuffs for their crimes, um, a lot do. But the problem is the institution, it's the judicial system, which unfortunately sees prisoners, uh, sees, you know, uh, convicts out of prison in no time. So they're not deterred and that needs to change because if criminals aren't deter deterred they become emboldened and brazen uh, there is a solution to this or well, not a solution rather but there is a response and it is um it is the public the people when they see these criminals carrying out their robberies on the streets well you know what happens to them they really beat them up um and they record it so that's that's a greater deterrent. I think that's ultimately wrong, but it is unarguably a greater deterrent for these thieves than the judicial system, because they fear for their lives when they know if if they get caught by the public. If they get caught by the police, actually, I've seen a couple of these videos, and you'll find that when the public do detain these crooks once they've been once they found them in the act. They're begging for the police to come. They're begging mm -hmm. for the police to come. And I've seen videos where they're even hugging. They're on the floor and they're hugging the feet of these cops yep. because they just want to be taken away, seen before a judge, and then let out onto the streets in a week time. In a week's time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there's a lot of shortcomings that need to be changed if if the cities to if the country is to become safer. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something though. Personally, I, I don't hey, I don't disagree with what happens. You get caught, you need to get snatched up here in the US. We say this uh, snitches get stitches crap. You know, if you get caught <laughs> telling on somebody for doing a that's that's BS. They take it to the opposite side there. And if you get caught, and I have the videos, I've seen the videos and I have uh -huh. the videos. I can't most of them, most of them, of course. But the, the police are 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 actually protecting the guy who's getting beat. It's crazy, isn't it? The people it's the most i don't Ludicrous. mind that i'm sorry i don't i don't mind instant justice because i'm always the one to say right is right and you just got caught in the act so you get dealt with i'm not saying kill them i'm just saying make them pay but that's just, <laughs> that's just deter them okay. uh, what i'm trying to say is that it's not an optimal solution the optimal scenario is that the the, the courts deal with them appropriately oh, yeah. and sentence them and make them pay and deter them ultimately to stop them from committing these crimes at the moment that's not happening and so yeah this uh sorry vi this vigilante the vigilante mobs that beat these guys to a pulp that's working more so than than the legal system right now so yeah, exactly it is what it is it is what it is True deterrence. Uh, but hey, Cap, right before I let you go, let me read. Uh, Cap has a section on his uh, on his website that uh, gives tips on uh, using Tinder. First of all, I'm going to put this out here again. I say stay off Tinder altogether. Just stay <laughs> off of it. I mean, it's you guys don't know. It's fish in a barrel. Wait till you see my next video uh, of a gentleman that I've interviewed before who just got, got, got drugged and robbed. He leaves his apartment, wakes up at 1 a.m. and goes outside his door. And the guy goes, what's going on? He said, I just got drugged and robbed and the guy go hey same thing happened to me what are the freaking odds it's the same you walk outside your door to getting drugged and that guy's been drugged too. i mean i'm thinking in my mind and everybody can think differently i'm thinking it's dozens of guys that are getting got every night and on the weekends 
hundreds. Thursday, Friday, mm-hmm. Saturday, mm-hmm. I think it's hundreds. And most people aren't saying anything about it. I have a few people who've reached out who I have the stories and 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 I'm trying to put them together and, and work as a group. But I'm trying to do what I can to keep you guys safe. And I say, ultimately, you know, don't get in that barrel because you guys are fish in a barrel. And when you when you jump in that barrel, I mean, you can jump in a barrel with a little protection and do this and do this and do that. But I'm, I'm telling you, I, I say stay off the apps. You have some good tips here, and I want to read through these right right quick. It says, um, one, uh, well, it's it says, here's my take on what to what to look out for and to stay safe. Uh, one, she wants to bring a friend. And I told you guys, and I got that from Rob. As soon as the second one says they're coming over, run. Uh-oh. <laughs> Get out of there. Run. There so is no the reason said, for her to be bringing an ex- another friend. Exactly. You want a friend, you ask for a friend. But yeah, yeah I mean, I, good luck with that. Anyway, <laughs> says uh, number two, says, uh, she wants to meet at a specific venue, like your house, like your apartment, like this bar, like that club. Good one. Um, says if she's persistent on meeting in a certain venue, it could spell trouble. Uh, the next one says she's fawning over you. You know, she's all in love. She just met you now. She's all in love, though. If she's gushing over you or showing too much interest uh, to be quick, uh, be quick, be or too quickly, be aware. If it seems to be true, then it likely is. Okay. And here's your, your quote says, see, si, papi. So, okay. Mi amor, papi, precioso, vida. Uh-oh. Uh-uh. If she's liberally calling you these things, then uh, this is a strong inter, uh, indicator that she is in, in the term you use, interesada. Interesada. Um, interesada. Uh, the next one is hypersexualization. Uh, her profile pictures are overly provocative. And guys, you should notice already. Arm, sleeve, sleeve tattoo, you know, stuff on the neck. I mean, you ought to know this by now. The next one is she, uh, she wants you to go to her communa. Yeah, good luck with that. I Whoa. want you to go over here. T- <laughs> no, 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 no. You have some good ones in here too. Finally, here are my tips on what not to do and what to do during your Tinder date. Let me see how many. Okay, it's just six or seven. Never leave your drinks unattended. Everybody should know. Uh, don't take her back to yours. Never take her back to your place. Uh, let her know. Let her know that friends are aware of your location that make anyone uh, think twice. I don't know if you yes. heard my uh, interview last week with the young lady who gave us these tips firsthand. Take a picture yeah. of her ID. Tell her I'm sending it to three people. I have yes. the picture of the taxi driver's license tag, all this good stuff. Um, tell your front of the house. Tell your receptionist that you're going on a date. It could save your butt. And remember, they take pictures. Some of the hotels always have a guard. I'm just saying. No, I would never live in a place that didn't have a guard. Mm-hmm. just for my safety because i'm not partaking anyway but just for my safety uh be conscious of her phone usage that's another thing and, and i discussed that in my last interview when somebody's texting on the phone while you're there what's she texting who's she texting i'm here i just gave it's just, it to it's him bad manners isn't it first yeah. of all well it's, it's not only rude but she could be texting somebody well, yeah I just exactly them and i'm out exactly you know? i mean she's got no justifiable reason for it anyway that's the point mm-hmm. you know she can't get away with that Exactly. I'm going to leave it on this one. Your your last and final note is a solid red dot. And this, everybody knows, this is my three top things to do before you go to Medellin, Colombia. Learn Spanish. Learn Spanish and learn Spanish. Mm-hmm. It will and can save your life. If you can't speak the language of the country, your host country that you're visiting, you can mark. Um, if you can't be understood, at least. Now, I go, I'm not fluent, but I can be understood. And in any Central American country, and, and I know how to ask for help, and I know how to find things, and you know, I I know the basics. Yo lo bastante. Very important. Learn Spanish. So let me leave it with you, Cab, because I know we're short on time. What did you want to leave my viewers with? What message do you want to leave with them? Well, I want them to know that Medellin is a fantastic city, and it's one that you know should be remembered. Most people that come to the city end up staying longer than they would have liked. Uh, had planned initially and that speaks volumes about the quality of the place with that being said you know we talk about crime and safety but that doesn't mean that it's we're not trying to paint a a picture of it being some uh hellhole or you know perilous because it's not Uh, and the chances are if you apply the tips that we're telling you you're going to have the best time of your life coming here um yeah i despite all the stories that i cover and all the things that happen, which aren't so great. Medellin is my favorite place on earth, actually. Well, the greater metropolitan area of Medellin, including Envigado and uh, Sabaneta, Bejo, all of it. I just, it's my favorite place. Absolutely enamored with it.
That's that's saying a lot. It it does. Yeah. You know, there is a hurting feeling when you're leaving. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to leave. You do not want to come you? back to the U.S. That's for sure. I mean, there are parallels. Yeah. The UK mm -hmm. is the same. It's just the pace of life, the the values. You leave all that behind when you when you leave Medellin, and this, your soul, if, if I can say that, yearns for it. It really does. And even after six years, I just can't wait to get back. Now, trust me, I, I I know the feeling. I have other places I need to go to first, though. I got to get to Cuba. <laughs> and I'm just coming back from Honduras. I oh, love fantastic. Guatemala. If you've never been to Guatemala, you need to get to Antigua, Guatemala, or Lake Atitlan, Guatemala, or Guatemala City. Beautiful. Yeah, very good things. Friendly. Love it. Love it. So anyway, Cap, I appreciate you much for jumping on for me, especially on short notice. And thanks for your response. And I mean, just adjusting the scheduling with me and so on. So I really appreciate you coming on and assisting me with this and passing on some valuable information. Remember, his website is methodmedagine.com. Methodmedagine.com. I'm going to jump on and read some of the stories when I get time, some more of the stories when I get time too. So again, Cap, I appreciate it, man. You, you have a good evening, okay? Rob, thank you so much. Thank I'll you, be, sir. Uh, yeah, watching out for your videos. Have a Please good day. Do. All right, you too. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Okay, again, guys, thanks for watching. And I told you from the beginning, I'd show you the full video that I did for my little boy for his birthday, for his ninth birthday. He just started playing football. Mind you, before he started even practicing, he had never even watched football on TV, never paid any attention to it. I was worried he was going to go in the right direction <laughs> if he would know to go in the right direction or not. But let me tell you something. He picked up the ball, and that was it. He scored a touchdown in every game that he played. But I swear the play of the game is when he was playing a defensive tackle and he took the ball. He kind of got yoked up and he reached out, took the ball. And, and I swear, and I did not speed this film up. So check out this video of my little boy. This was my birthday present to him. That means the rap, the music, all that stuff was done for him for his ninth birthday. Thank you guys for watching. Finally, nodding is going down. Keep doing your thing till you in the league and the fans be screaming your name loud. Pop, pop, gon' be there cause he proud. Away team got a game plan, you now. Ball lock, go dumb one time. Put the team on your back when the game on the line. Go get you a set plan, defense attack, or make them double you on the line. Go be the best that they ever saw. Catch a pass and tap a toe down on the line. Go knock out a op every time. To be at the top, gotta climb. You might be alone, but it's fine.
Join me on social media. I am DC Born Rob Official on Instagram. I am DC Born Rob Official One on TikTok. I am DC Born Rob O on Twitter. Don't be like this guy right here. You're you're just so stupid. I, I had to send you a video to let you know you're so stupid. That's right. Don't be like this guy right here. Join me on social media. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you go down and hit subscribe. You definitely like it. helps that YouTube algorithm. You know what I'm talking about? You see what I'm saying? We have a YouTube channel. Like it. Please comment and share if you liked the video. Please subscribe and kick the bell.